Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about a couple of different things that help me with my fibromyalgia. Today we're going to be focusing on the fibromyalgia diet that I deal with in order to help me be able to lessen my symptoms and to be able to live a more pain-free life. That's right here on Garden Jen's Journey. All right, so like I was talking about, I deal with fibromyalgia meaning that my body's in constant inflammation and has constant pain and fatigue and all sorts of other symptoms that make up that fibromyalgia uh, disorder, disease, whatever you wanna call it. And so that's what we're going to focus on today. How to uh, help yourself be able to deal with fibromyalgia in a more effective way um, that is simply by changing your diet. There's a lot of foods that we eat actually increases inflammation in the body. And because fibromyalgia is a result of increased inflammation in the body, one real easy and natural way to try to fix the issue is to eliminate um, the items that are causing inflammation. And a lot of those items happen to be the foods that we eat. You can do a lot of research and uh, find out a lot of different foods and food components that lead to inflammation in the body. And there's different uh, views on everything. And so you really have to do your research. Uh, you have to experiment with it yourself to find what works for you and what doesn't. Even though we all are human, our bodies react differently to different things. We're all individuals. So what might work for me may not work for you. So just uh, take what I'm sharing with you, do your own research, and then see what works for you and apply it to your life. And, you know, learn as you go, which is what I've had to do. So inflammatory foods. So you have your oils your uh, vinegars and other unnatural um, acids, your sugars, uh, you also have uh, nightshades, and you have uh, gluten and, and things like that. Those are uh, quite a few of the main food group irritants that you have. You also have some chemical components of different food items like uh, the sodium bicarbonate that is in baking soda and also in baking powder with a potassium carbonate. So those are all known in their own ways to be irritants in your body. Gluten is uh, very controversial as being an uh, irritant because it's generally not the, the plant, it's generally not the gluten, which is actually uh, formed bonds when, uh, when the, the two different proteins get together, they make gluten. But anyways, the, the wheat, the rye, the barley, the grain itself is generally not the problem. It's all the junk that is on it. Um, if you have ever been where there's uh, crop farms for your different grains and things like that, you'd be interested to notice that a lot of farmers, not all, but a lot of farmers use herbicides towards the end of the growing cycle to kill the whole field at once so it all dries out together so they can harvest it at a certain time. So not only do you have the pesticides or the synthetic fertilizers, but now you have herbicides sprayed all over these, these plants right before harvest to be able to make the food ready to harvest. So you have all that, that poison all over this food. No wonder people are getting sick. It's not necessarily the grain, but it's what they've done to it. 
not to mention the GMOs that they are doing to, to try to promote uh, better crops that are disease resistant and things like that. And there's a big difference between GMOs and hybrids. So don't, you know, don't get those two confused. GMOs and hybrids are completely different. So um, just to clear that up. But yeah, your grains, generally, if you're, if you're getting sick and having a reaction from eating grains, um, what I would suggest that you try first before eliminating all grains from your diet, go organic. Um, start eating organic products and see how much that actually changes how you start feeling. And it's, it probably is going to take about a month for you to notice. Um, once the poisons work their way out of your system, you'll notice that change. If that doesn't work, or if that's just the start of, of what you want to work with, the second thing I would suggest that you look at is your nightshade vegetables. Sweet potatoes are not in the nightshade family. They're in a completely different family, so you don't have to worry about sweet potatoes. But um, any other potatoes, like your russets, your reds, your Yukon golds, peppers, tomatoes, and eggplants are all nightshades. Um, I would suggest that you eliminate those from your diet for at least, at least a month. I would go more along two months and see if you see some improvement from the nightshade vegetables. Way back in the day, <laughs> nightshades were not eaten because they were known to be poisonous. Nightshades are very poisonous plants. And uh, so not sure how people figured out that they could eat potatoes, tomatoes, peppers, and eggplants, but they figured it out. Yet there's that component of the nightshade that still irritates many people's systems and so they, they can't eat it. So that would be my next step for, for whoever's dealing with fibromyalgia or any neurological pain or things like that, chronic inflammation, get rid of the nightshade family of, of vegetables for a while. See how that makes you feel. Number three, sugars, refined or natural sugars. If you're eating a ton of sugars, sugars really increases inflammation. Uh, we know through just regular uh, media reports, news reports, and things like that, how bad sugar is for you, especially if you overdo it. Um, I stay away from the table sugar. Um, I buy the cane sugar for my husband. He loves to have his coffee with sugar in it, um, his cereal with sugar on it, things like that. So there is that table sugar in my home. But it's the cane sugar. It's the sugar that is as close to the plant as possible um, without being overly refined. We don't use that white pioneer sugar or, you know, that really, really processed sugar. We do have honey and we do have maple syrup that we also use um, as sweeteners um, in the home. But again, very sparingly. What I find that I need to use myself is stevia. Now, stevia is an all-natural sugar substitute. It's not sugar, but it's not a chemical compound like aspartame or sucralose or any of that stuff. It's all-natural. It comes from the stevia plant, and it's made simply by drying out the stevia leaves and grinding it up. That's all there is to it. Uh, some processes do kind of bleach the leaves so it looks white because not everybody wants to eat a sugar that's green. One of the reasons that I have to watch my sugar besides fibromyalgia is I deal with candida. And candida is a yeast that, that naturally occurs in humans. But it can easily uh, get out of control and overwhelm the, the body and cause a lot of uh, infection and, and unpleasantries. We'll leave it at that. But if you are familiar with baking and uh, you are familiar that when you bake uh, with yeast, you need to give the yeast sugar and warm 
water or other liquids and it becomes happy 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 and it multiplies and it creates all sorts of blubbly goodness it's great for making bread and things like that but you don't want that in your body which is what candida is it's that yeast that in your body if you feed it sugar and it lives in a warm moist environment especially if you're heavy or you're well endowed you have those warm moist dark places that it just loves so if you're if you're eating too much sugar you're going to make that that candida really happy and it's going to cause a lot of uh, unpleasant uh, situations for you so um, sugar is an irritant and it also causes outbreak in candida so that's another thing to try to eliminate from your diet is excess sugar the last thing I want to talk about and I think one of the hardest things to, to, to accept I know for me it was because I thought people are just crazy and just extreme with their diets but after really just biting the bullet and taking that step in faith and going okay what have I got to lose I decided that this this was an important step uh, uh, to take and that's what I'm going to share with you now eliminating oils from your diet like I said I had to really bite this bullet because it just sounds so crazy and so impossible to do um, you have so many people who tell you that you need to have those healthy fats because your brain is like 95% fat or something like that and the the electrodes in your brain needs that fat in order to uh, make the, the signals go back and forth and this and that you know you need fat in your diet um, that's true but did you also know that you can get fat in your diet by eating whole foods you don't need to get those uh, jugs of, of olive oil those containers of coconut oil the tubs of butter um, to get that fat in your diet that your body needs um, if you eat uh, like a quarter of an avocado a day or a quarter cup of, of nuts a day um, you can have some coconuts um, there's some other um, like peanuts peanut butter uh, things like that that are whole food fats that is the best way for you to get those those fats that your body your brain needs to operate without being made in such a way that it actually causes your body irritation and inflammation there's so many health arguments out there right now about uh, coconut oil and avocado oil and grapeseed oil and this and that and you know about what kind of oils and fats that you need to have in your diet and it's all good and well that they're trying to promote healthiness but the healthiest way for you to get your fat that you need is to have it in its whole form because when you have a food in the whole package everything in that food works together um, to give you that balanced nutrition to break itself down in a natural way that's not harmful like it, uh, for sugar we'll take a date for instance a date is loaded with sugar lots and lots of sugar in a date but there's all that fiber and there's the other uh, nutrients in the date and it all works together as it um, is digested in your body to release those nutrients that sugar those fibers in a way that your body actually is nourished and not irritated the same when you eat your nuts or you eat your avocado you eat some fruit instead of drinking fruit juice all all of the components of the whole food together work to help your body assimilate that that nutrition better and to be more nourished and less irritated and it took a while like I said for me to really accept this idea because it's how do you cook without oil how do you not use oil you know at all because our society has been taught how to you know fry with oil saute in oil 
how to cover your bread in butter, your potatoes in butter. Um, you know, there's there's oil in in almost any prepared food that you pick up at the store. When you read those those labels on those boxes and packages, you see oil and and uh, same with the the vinegar that's not good for you. You see it in your ketchup, your mustard, your salad dressings. Um, you see it everywhere. And um, those are the things that are actually the most harmful for our bodies because they create a toxic, irritated um, atmosphere in our bodies. So I would suggest to you that if, if you are dealing with a lot of pain and a lot of fatigue and things like that, try taking oil out of your diet. Um, I saute with uh, water now. Uh, and that even means sometimes I have to cover my my containers when I'm sauteing so it doesn't evaporate or have more water on hand to add to the pan because that oil's not there. Um, also, um, I do occasionally use the, the spray nonstick uh, oil depending on what I'm cooking with, but generally not. I have bought myself the silicone uh, pads to use for my baking trays. So I don't have to use that uh, sprayed um, butter anymore. But one of the things that is it just stuck in my mind when uh, learning how to do this diet more effectively for myself is if you think about the things that need oil the most, it's things we shouldn't be eating anyways. I mean, a lot of people eat deep fried foods that's not healthy for you anyways. Can we say clogged arteries? Um, cakes and brownies and cookies that are full of butter and oil. We shouldn't be eating those anyway. At least not a ton of them. Uh, you know, you think of your bag chips and uh, your movie popcorn. Um, the, the salad dressings that are so processed and full of fat and stuff like that. Um, they're not healthy for us anyway, so why are we eating them? And so when that came to my mind about the stuff that's irritating our body, it's stuff we're not supposed to be eating anyways because overall it's not healthy. Um, it just makes sense to just quit eating it. Um, so it's very hard for some people to, to understand that you need to learn how to cook a different way in order for your body to start healing. And so that is my challenge, not only to you, but to myself. I've been really struggling with, with my health for a while now. And as you guys, if you follow my journey, you've, you've noticed that. And I'll share some videos here um, about different things I struggle with. But um, overall, as I'm learning different ways of trying to improve my health, um, I want to share that information with you and for me to find ways that that just changing my diet is starting to help me feel better. And then if I regress back to the old ways, how I start to feel worse, I want to share that with you. So hopefully you don't make the same mistakes that I made. Um, you know, so many people depend on what the medical journals and the medical experts say instead of paying attention to their bodies. That's why I'm sharing this information with you. Um, if you like this video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up. That way everybody else can see that, hey, you know, maybe this is something that you might want to listen to. If you haven't already, subscribe to uh, my channel and then I will have some videos up above that uh, you might find interesting to watch. I thank you so much for being with me today and just hearing me out today. And as always, I hope wherever you are that you are wonderfully blessed. Bye-bye.